We're going to continue to roll into our post-race press conferences here in today's Cheese at 355 at the Glen. We've now been joined by our race-winning crew chief, Todd Gordon, and Walt Zarnicki, the vice chairman of Team Penske. Um, Todd, you were in here yesterday with Joey's NASCAR Xfinity Series win. Um, in all honesty, did you expect to be here today? I thought we had a shot at it, but I don't know that I expected it. <clears throat> Um, I mean, it's, we've continued to evolve this program and, uh, road course racing in general. I think we, uh, we put a concerted effort in Sonoma this year and saw the rewards of it. And, uh, and we dug pretty hard at trying to make sure we had long run speed and, uh, um, showed off today. And I think, uh, you know, we had enough speed to, to push the four into, into getting out of their fuel strategy. And Walt, for you, this is the first win for Team Penske here at Watkins Glen. Just talk a little bit about, you know, Joey being able to um, come away with the win here today over the four car. Yeah, thank you. It, it means an awful lot to Team Penske. Uh, as you've heard, this is Team Penske's first cup win at the Glen. I believe this is our winningest track in the whole history of our company, going back to the Trans Am and the Can Am, uh, you know, the Nationwide and the Xfinity and the rest, a great run yesterday. So this is particularly meaningful for us uh, to win here today uh, in, in this race. And on a personal, from a personal perspective, I, I also want to send my personal condolences because I had a close relationship with Michael Argetsinger. Uh, his father, Cameron, I met back in the Trans Am days who built this racetrack and made it what it is. And Michael and I developed a friendship over the last 20 years. And as some of you know, Michael passed away here about a month ago. And so it uh, means a great deal for me personally uh, that we were able to, uh, able to win this race uh, here at the Glen. So, so for Joey to do it, you know, it's, it's Team Penske. Uh, Joey's done a great job, but Todd and the whole Shell Penzoil crew, uh, I knew from the beginning, I just felt comfortable and confident all day long that we had a real opportunity to win here today. And Todd, for you, um, you know, Joey and the team were able to lock themselves into the chase um, early this year at Daytona, but coming to have the second win at this point in the season, just talk a little bit about how, you know, that momentum can, and can help you guys going into the chase here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, definitely felt uh, felt that we you know we executed well at Daytona to get that first win, and uh, um, I thought w as an organization we've executed well. We had a little speed to find in our race cars, and uh, um, through the through the first third of the season, um, through the last probably six weeks, I feel like we've we've found some more speed. And we've we've figured out where we're where we're lacking a little, and and we've we've had more speed. But uh, uh, we've we've had a lot of bridesmaid stresses here the last month. Uh, with both Joey and uh, and Brad finishing second at, at several places, so um, good to get back to victory lane and, and and build the momentum going forward into the chase because we've only got a few races left. Right. We'll go ahead and take questions for Todd and Walt. If you have one, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation, and we'll start with Kyle. Kyle Mag, the race chase online. Todd, you were in here yesterday. You talked about uh, growing up in this area. Uh, where does today's win compare to all the ones in your in your uh, career as a crew chief? I know you, this is your third one here at the Glen. Yeah, it's uh, this one's pretty special. For the Glen wins, this is uh, this is this is the the top of it. Obviously, uh, in '11, it was it was pretty ex pretty uh, pretty big for me to win back home. That was the first win here in the Nationwide Series then. Um, but uh, to come here and execute on a cup level is uh is is awesome because it's it's back home uh you know this is this is new york state and this is two and a half hours from where i grew up i came and watched races here before i moved south to go racing so um and, and i love road course racing uh not just because of here but i think it's a different you know it's a different venue for us it's a different mindset to to what you've got to do with a race car and and it brings out good execution and great race car drivers and uh i think we had that today all right. I believe we had a question. Okay, go ahead. I just Ty. want to follow up here. When was? Do you remember the first time you came to Watkins Glen? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, it's it's it's. I don't know remember the year, but uh, uh, it was for a then Bush Series race. Um, came up here in the early '90s, um, and and just it was just awesome. I mean, just to to be part of the venue and and spend a little bit of time down here. Uh, grandparents had a place up on uh, Cuca Lake, so. Uh, not too far from here, and uh, the the area is just fabulous. It's a uh, it's a great racing venue, and uh, pretty pretty proud of what the racetrack's been able to do with uh, with the grandstands and and everybody here. It, it's it's been a great venue. All right, I believe we got a question from Bob up front here. Bob Parker, CSPN. Todd, if this is a chase race, how different is everybody playing the strategy and 
We've had fuel mileage races the last few weeks. Uh, do you have any clue what your fuel mileage will be next week with the new package at Michigan? Hey, that's a really good question. I think we'll uh, we'll have to see how that comes out next week at Michigan. Um, you know, with a with the hydrag drag package. Uh, I, I think it'll be interesting to see how that works out at Michigan. Just to, I know we ran at Indy, but Indy's Indy's more of a one groove racetrack. Uh, let's see what happens and how the groove moves around moves around next week. Um, it's a wild card, but that's a that's cool because it allows the race teams to kind of react to it, and it gives you opportunity. Whenever there's a change, there's an opportunity to have more success uh, and to beat people in the transition to change. So, um, looking forward to see what we do next weekend there. Um, as to as to this uh, Watkins Glen being a chase race, um, you know the fuel mileage strategy would be more stressful. Uh, I think you'd see uh, you'd see a few guys depending on what segment it's in and and where it is. Um, I think you'd you'd see a little more conservativeness, but it may not be a ton of it. If it fell in the first first segment, I I think you'd see a lot of risk on from especially from guys that have nothing to lose. Uh, it's a it's you know the the back half of the of the chase grid would would definitely be risk on to try to find that win and get themselves through. So um, see where it all falls out if it ever ever happens. All right, we'll go to Nate, please. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Todd, following up on that, uh, I don't know if you were aware, but uh, Adam Stevens was having Kyle Busch save fuel in case of a green white checkered finish. I take it that scenario never even occurred to you or mattered, I guess, because you guys are in the chase. Well, we're in different positions, and that's uh, that's something Adam and I. I mean, Adam obviously Adam was Joey's engineer uh, back when, so there's a good relationship there. Uh, uh, Adam and I talked uh, this week about last week. I said, told him, I said, why'd you run me out of gas? So, you know, if he just didn't push so hard, the the two of us could have finished one too. But, um, you know, it's last week I think was was a hit to them, and and their need is they've got multiple wins. They've been on fire, and their needs to be in the top thirty. So. Uh, when you talk about risk on of, of winning races and, and how you run your fuel strategy, theirs was to finish the race, and they ended up finishing second today. And that's a that, that I I haven't looked at the sheet, but I would assume that that put them locked in the top 30 at this point. And, and you, everybody has their own goals. So theirs is we execute, we put ourselves in the top 30, we're in the chase. And, and I think he did that correctly. I knew that they were in that boat, so we're in a different boat, and and we could push. The, the piece that I never told Joey to save fuel because if we save fuel, then the 4, the 20, and the 42 ahead of us could be more aggressive on saving fuel. And if they did, the 4 would have made it. So we were, we were full on. I, I listened to Rodney. Rodney was telling him when the 22 got to him, he had to push. So um, we had to get there as quick as we could to make them, make them use up all they could. And uh, fortunately, we, uh, they were a third of a lap short. I think it'd have been an interesting race uh, if 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 the 18s guaranteed in uh, in the top, you know, if they're in the top 10 in points. I think it'd have been an interesting race. Uh, we had strengths and weaknesses today, and I think uh, people had different ones. But uh, um, it'd be a great race, and that's uh, that's that's how situations fall out. But as it was, I think there's a lot of strategy tied up, and and there was a lot of suspense because I was scratching my head wondering how the four car got that far. <laughs> be honest with you so uh um they made it uh, almost <laughs> and uh i finished third today but uh um we did what we had to execution wise to get back to them to push them to make sure that they couldn't save as much fuel as they needed to all right we've now been joined by our race winner driver of the number 22 shell pencil for joey logano and joey this is your second victory of the season. It's also the first time that we've ever had a driver sweep the NASCAR Xfinity Series race and the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race here at um, Watkins Glen. So uh, talk a little bit about, you know, the end of the race, um, you know, knowing the four car could potentially run out of fuel, but really what it means to be able to visit Victory Lane back to back two days in a row. Yeah, it's um, it's remarkable. Uh, I've never swept a weekend before. I've come close a couple times. I've never um, actually done it. And uh, didn't really think a road course would be the time that we that we were able to uh, sweep the weekend, but uh, you know what a special race car I had yesterday, such a fast race car, and um, we were able to drive up through the field and just uh, you know have a really good car. And today, uh, Todd made some great adjustments overnight um, after we talked about the Xfinity race and uh, got my my Shell Penzo Ford even better, um, which I thought was great. <laughs> and uh, you know we kind of worked our way up through the field um, slowly and methodically throughout the race and. Uh, you know, and then we kind of kept recycling 
uh, as the pit sequence kept changing. And eventually, we found ourselves as the you know the lead car on that pit sequence. Um, and so Todd did a great job uh, calling this race, uh, obviously, and uh, makes up a lot for last week. Not that he called a bad race <laughs> last week, but I'm not saying that, Todd. I love you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But I was saying it's it's nice that uh, you yeah, know no. it, it played out this time. You know sometimes it it doesn't work out the the way you want it to, and um, you know it's it's why we don't really talk about it much during a race. He just uh, he does his thing and I do my thing, and um, you know we have 100% faith in each other, uh, no matter what the decision is and whether I do what I do on the racetrack or what he does on on pit road. And um, our team just executed perfectly today. You know we may not have had the fastest race car, we had a very good race car. Um, you know that was capable of running in the top three. I felt like, but um, you know, the execution of the day is what won us this race, and I feel like that's a strong suit of this 22 team right now. All right, we'll continue to take questions for Todd, Joey, or Walt. If you have one, please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and we're going to start up front with Reed. Now, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Congratulations, guys. Um, Joey, uh, on the restart. About halfway through, it looked like you took a real hard hit from McMurray, was, which basically knocked him out of the race. Right. Did, was that a cause for concern at all? Uh, to be honest, I didn't really look at the back of the car after the race, but, um, you know, I don't even know how it happened, what happened in front of me, but uh, I know the six checked up. I think the car in front of him checked up. Yeah, and, shift. Okay, and um, I was right on the six, so I didn't have much further to go before I hit him, which stayed my nose. Um, and then I got wailed in the back, and uh, it's just hard to, yeah, I mean, you, you can't see nothing. You know, you're, you're going uphill. You can't, you, all you see is spoiler. And uh, so you're driving blind. Um, every driver is. And, um, you know, things happen that quick. is bam, boom, done. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it happens that quick. And uh, it, it's, it's tough, but it didn't really affect my car any. You know, my car drove fine afterwards, and um, obviously, and uh, you know, was able to keep driving through the field and keep working our plan. All right, we're going to go to Kyle, and then we're going to come back to the gentleman in the gray shirt. Go ahead, come. Kyle Magda, Race Chaser Online, uh, over here, guys. Joey, um, last week you, you fell short there at Pocono, and this week with fuel mileage. Uh, how, how much uh, do you talk with Todd about uh, fuel mileage and just focusing on that each and every week? We talk about it. I don't think we talk about it a whole bunch. Um, you know, and I was, I was, we were joking under the red flag. And I said, hey, because I, I get confused on what he's thinking because I don't really know when I'm just driving the car around in circles and he's calling the race. And I asked him, I said, hey, uh, do you want to tell me the game plan or just want me to drive and I'll figure it out later on? He's, and he gave me the, yeah. So <laughs> that means everything without saying anything. I know that. And uh, so the, the cool thing about our, our, the chemistry that Todd and I have and, and the, really this whole 22 team have is that you know, we can communicate without even saying anything. You know, we, we, we know each other very well, and that just comes from spending a lot of time together and building those relationships up. And, um, you know, I'm saying it's not just between the, the driver and the crew chief, but it's the whole team. You know, they're, they're a real family. You know, they hang out together away from the racetrack, and I think that shows uh, every week. And, um, you know, they have a lot of fun together. It's not very often you have a team that has a lot of fun that's also very successful and understands how to work hard. And uh, that's what we got with this, this 22 team and, all, and really all of Team Penske, the way we all work together and build fast race cars. It's, it's very fun to be a part of. And you talked yesterday about running the, uh, the Xfinity Series race just to get more track time. I mean, did you think you'd get a road course victory with all the, um, the additional track time you've gotten with other races like at Sonoma and also here at Watkins Glen? <laughs> You just gotta keep trying. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, you hope you break through. And um, you know, I, I said in here yesterday. I remember the first time I came here, and I was so frustrated because I didn't know how to go fast. You know, a lot of times you can point out an area you're you're slow and know what you need to go faster. And I was lost. And um, it just takes a long time to figure out these racetracks and figure out what you need in your car and be able to communicate that. And um, we put a lot of a lot of work into road courses, and in, in particular Watkins Glen, um, on, on trying to build a fast race car and understanding what we got to do and um, you know, it, it, you know, hard work equals results. You know, we, we say that all the time at Team Penske. It's a quote that's up on the, on the, in the gym that we, we read every time we go in there. And uh, it, it really does, you know, it's something to live by. All right, go ahead. Uh, Tyler Head from WWNY. Uh, you just touched on it. Uh, you said the first time you came down here, you were really frustrated just because you had a lot of learning to do. Um, all these years later to be able to sweep the weekend, how gratifying is that? Very, um, you know, not, not just 
uh, for being able to sweep the weekend, but really from finishing second a lot lately. <laughs> and, and now to see, see the checkered flag without a car in front of me for once felt really, really good. Um, you know, Team Penske is, uh, what, last four races in a row, one of our cars finished second. You know, Brad finished second a couple of times, and so did we. And, um, you know, it feels good to, to break through and not be the bridesmaid anymore and, and actually get to have the checkered flag and, and have some fun. And uh, I think that was a little extra emotion at, at the end of the race. Um, good thing this is a long track because I was going crazy inside the car for about a lap afterwards. So pretty cool. All right. We're going to go to Bob and then to the gentleman to my left. Uh, Bob Pocker, CSPN. Uh, Joey, uh, is it is it um, winning a, a fuel mileage race? Um, I guess can you compare the feeling of winning a fuel mileage race versus losing one and just, you know, how... Uh, <laughs> losing sucks a lot more than winning. Yeah, well, I know that, <laughs> I but, that. I, mean, um, I guess, you know, is it, I mean, just how, str I mean, if you knew you were going to win a fuel mileage race 50% of the time, would you, would it be fun to do? I mean, would it be with, with all the stress and trying to manage it or... Is it frustrating even when you're winning it? Fifty percent? I take winning fifty percent of the time, any time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that'd be a hell of a record uh, to be able to do that. And um, you know, to, to win a few mileage race, most of the time you have to have a fast car as well. Most of the time, you know, you you have to be running up in the top five. You know, I think Matt was running fifth last week or something like that, maybe even closer to front. When he went, that's not because, you know, he had a fast race car, you know, he didn't really luck into it. It's not like he was running 20th and he won the race, you know, he had a fast car, he won the race. Today we had a top three car, we executed the plan and, uh, and, and we won the race. You know, you, you know, coming down to these things at the end of the race and you need a caution or, or, you, or you want it to go green and, and, you know, whatever engine you're on, you just got to work the plan. And if it doesn't work out, oh, well, we swung the bat, you know, and that's, that's really the, the position that we're in right now. Um, you know, with where we are in points and with with a win, you know, we got to swing the bat. What do we got to lose? You know, if we don't make it and we finish 30th, oh, well, you know, we, we, we tried to win the race, you know, and then um, we're, we're fortunate to be able to race that way right now for the next few weeks, um, you know, and, and today it's fun to be on the know you have enough gas and be aggressive instead of being the how much can you save and you think you saved enough. And I never, I'm not really good when I'm on that end. I got... I really have one speed, and it's just go, and Todd knows that, and it's hard for me to check up. It's really hard for me to check up, and so uh, when, when you hear that, you know, we're, we're you know, right, on, right on it for, with gas, you know, you, you just say, well, I'm going to drive this thing hard, and, uh, you know, that's kind of where I excel. All right. I believe you had a question over here to the left, and then we'll come back to Jim Utter. Steve Ovens, Race Chaser Online, uh, for Joey or Todd or, or both. Um, Another year working together. Um, you guys get the win today at Watkins Glen, only a few weeks away from the chase. Do you guys feel that you're in an even better place as a team than you were last year heading into the chase uh, with a couple of wins now and a sweep at, at a road course? Um, I, I would say if you look at our statistics, it would say yes. Um, we've got more top fives, more top tens, more polls, uh, same number of wins we had at this point last year. Uh, the team is a, crew, is a group, as Joey talked about, uh, I think chem team chemistry and continuity is at a level that we've not been at. We, we continue to grow that, and, uh, and, and we're, we're, we're knocking on the door. We're building momentum at the right time. Um, we've, been, we've been top five contenders every week here lately, last month. Uh, we found some speed in the race cars at the shop. I think, uh, I think as the aero packages have moved, we've been able to re react to those very successfully. I think that, that's a testament to everybody at Team Penske back at the shop that, that they give us the information that we need to work forward. But uh, I think we're in the right position, um, obviously, continuing to find speed uh, and, and continue to need to find a little more speed. Everybody always needs that. So um, at, to, to where we're at, yeah, I think every year that we, go, we stay together, it, it's great because um, – Everybody knows what everybody else is thinking. To, to, to Joey's point, he drives a race car. I call the race, and we don't we don't argue about that. It's you know it's it's very clear as to what each of us need to do, and um, the team does a phenomenal job of of everybody executing. And whether that's pit crew, whether that's engineers, whether that's mechanics in the garage, it's a uh, I got the greatest support team behind us, and uh, I look forward to what we can do. 
All right, Jim, go ahead. Jim Utter, motorsport.com. Um, this question is for Todd and for Joey. Um, you've already been to Michigan once. You guys finished fifth. Uh, you talked about the work that uh, Penske has done in regards to the new aero packages. For each of you, how do you how is what is how is your approach different going into next weekend? Has it changed, or is it such a big variable that you really don't know until you get there? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of unknowns, but uh, we just ran a race, you know, a few weeks ago in Indy with it, and um, I think when there's a rules change, it, it's a lot of work on the teams for sure. Um, but I also think. It, it's not a bad thing for Team Penske. I think, uh, you know, we're able to um, put together a package pretty quick a lot of times when uh, there's a, a rules change and we're able to take advantage of the opportunity that's, uh, you know, lying there for us. And, um, you know, and that's just because of hard work and, and the tools we got and the way we know how to use them. And uh, I'm proud of that. Uh, you know, we, we, if there is a race, we're going to go there to win, you know. And uh, it's a unique, you know, uh, package, obviously. Um, but... You know, we got to do what we can to, to try to rack up some more wins. That's what it's all about. Um, just, you know, to, to what happens next week, I think, it, you know, to, to second his thought, it's a it's an opportunity. Um, see where it takes us and where it goes. But uh, we, we've we had a lot of speed at Michigan. That's uh, our first win as a, as a you know, as a duo. Um, it, so we've been good there. We've been competitive for wins. Uh, I think... Actually, the spring race was probably one of our weakest, and, and we understand why. Uh, looking forward to where the new aero package takes us going back there, because I think it, uh, I, I think you know, it's it, it it plays into our hand. I think we understand a little bit about it, but uh, I think it plays into some of the things that we like in our race cars, uh, Joey and myself, just to, to the the Shell Pennzoil team. So um, I'm excited to get back there and see what happens, because uh, we didn't run too bad at Indy with it. We just uh, didn't quite get there. All right, we'll take our final question. Okay, we'll take two more. Go ahead in the back, and then we'll finish up. Uh, Jenna Cottrell, W-E-N-Y. Joey, you know, it's the first uh, sweep here at Watkins Glen International, your first career sweep. Is it safe to say that you have a new favorite track? I was sitting here thinking, I was like, as soon as we figured out how to win here, they're going to tear the racetrack apart. <laughs> <laughs> that figures. <laughs> Jeez. You get to dig it up, too. Yeah, I know. Well, at least that's cool. Uh, that's a, I left some cool marks on it. Hopefully I can take a chunk of the racetrack where some donuts on it. But, uh, um, you know, I, I always enjoyed coming to road courses, um, but I was never very successful at them before. So, uh, you know, it kind of worked out well today. But, um, you know, I like all the racetracks. I'm, I'm not prejudiced. I like them all. They're all, uh, you know, fun in their own, their own way, uh, in different ways. And um, I just think it's cool that we could do something different every week. You know, we're going from a, a road course to a two-mile racetrack. You know, it's, it's pretty cool that we have a sport that, that we can race different racetracks and different, uh, you know, disciplines and, um, you know, take something different as a driver and uh, as a team. And something I think I'm very proud of is that this team's won at short tracks like Bristol and, and mile and a half like Texas and super speedways earlier this, this year in Daytona. Uh, and now a road course, you know, that's a well-rounded team, um, and I'm proud to be a part of that um, because not only as a driver does it take a lot of different things, but as a team it takes a completely different attitude every time you go to a different racetrack like that, and um, just goes to show what, the, what Team Penske is uh, capable of doing. All right, go ahead. Uh, Dan Bates, WNY Sports. Uh, just talk a little bit about, you talk about how you felt lost here before. What clicked this weekend, and, you know, to get two victories, what, did you make the adjustments to, to get into victory lane twice? Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, it, it's not like it was one thing and boom, all of a sudden we figured it out. I feel like every time I've come here as a driver, I've gotten a little faster, I've gotten a little bit more competitive. And uh, last few times we've had a, you know, close to the top five car and we'd run in the top ten. You know, we were borderline there. Um, you know, this week I feel like we, we made some changes to our cars to really understand what we needed in certain sections of the racetrack. And, uh and saw speed because of that. Uh, you know, is there still areas that I look at where we can improve our race car? Oh yeah, we can definitely make our race car a lot better. But, um, and as a driver, can I look at areas that I can become better? Yeah, for sure. You know, we, like I said, we were a very good car today, but, um, you know, and, and if we had clean air, we, you know, we probably would have stayed up there. Um, 
you know, if we got the lead, but uh, we can always be faster. You know, you never just sit still and say, oh, we're good enough. We figured out how to win, and that's it. You know, is this, there's always areas to improve on and get better at. All right. For Joey, Todd, and Walt, congratulations again on today's victory, and we appreciate you coming in and visiting with us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I literally burnt it down. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry, Walt. <laughs> There's another one back at the shop. Don't worry about it. I got all the good out of it. I didn't need it anymore. <laughs> Heck with that car. Still burning in Victory Lane. <laughs> oh, yeah. The whole time. Oh, yeah. The tire was wrapped on the rotor. Shouldn't have got it in the car. So I with all the...